Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. We are continuing to preview the 2022 college football season, and our college football previews are presented this year by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Our stop today is Seward, Nebraska, and we get to visit with the head football coach for the Concordia Bulldogs, Coach Patrick Daberko, in his sixth year with the program. Coach, let's look back really quickly. Last season, 7-3 and three overall, and you finished for a tie in for third place in the Great Plains Athletic Conference, a very tough conference, and I think that's uh, well documented, uh, especially in recent years. Just uh, and and it's tough to be up there in the upper half. You're not only in the upper half, you're tied for third. Interesting season, and we mentioned this last year. It was a front-loaded schedule, no doubt about it. You start off one and three, but you win your last six games after that. Now, Coach, there aren't a lot of teams that are coming into the summer and into the fall of 2022 on a six-game winning streak. It just doesn't happen. So uh, props to you for that. I know just on the outside of the playoffs looking in. Tell us really quickly about 21. Well, we uh, we finished a lot stronger than we started, like you said. You know, it was, it was good to see some success late in the season. Uh, good to see the guys finish the season out strong and send some of those seniors off. Um, on a victorious note and um, uh, really kind of take a step towards a, a higher level of performance that we've been we've been uh, we've been scratching at. And um, I think it's a good stepping stone for, for bigger things for this football program. And um, we're working really hard to make sure that uh, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Coach, you bring back your quarterback from last season, DJ McGarvey, who threw for more than 140 yards per game, 19 touchdowns to just seven interceptions. He was a young player last year, his first season with the program. He comes back for you. And I know uh, with the spring and in the fall, there are lots of quarterbacks on that roster, so there may be some competition. Yeah, DJ is a great kid, uh, fiery competitor, and uh, did a great job for us last year, stepping into a role that he, uh, you know, coming in your freshman year, you, you know, we, we prepare our freshmen to come in and just prove that they're good teammates and prove that they're coachable. That's kind of the goal of freshman year. Um, stepping in and, and, and starting at quarterback is usually not in uh, in the, <laughs> you know, the plan. And uh, but but DJ handled that really well. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see his progress and was was very impressed with how he handled himself in that moment. Well, and for him and for whoever else uh, might have that opportunity for you this year, obviously the cover's not bare for uh, receivers to to throw to. You have uh, Karel Colmus, who's who's rising along the the leadership board in Concordia for the all time receiving yards and and more. And then an All American, honorable mention All American, tied in last year in Garrett Shart coming back among others. Yeah, we, we feel like we have some really good options. And, uh, you know, just between those two players, that, that's a lot of uh, dynamic talent. And, you know, Carell, Carell is um, Carell's a fighter. He, like he's you never worry about Carell with injuries like he'll, he'll have really awkward landings. <laughs> uh, coming down with the football and he's just got rubber bones or at least he plays like it. I think he plays through a lot of things. And um, and then Garrett Shard is just another. Both of those guys are eight man uh, Nebraska high school football players, you know, just small town kids who um, have had a lot of success here. And, and so it's, it's fun to see. Um, but, but yeah, Garrett's Garrett's a load to tackle and uh, and he has the speed of a wide out. And so uh, it makes it makes it really difficult when he has the ball in his hands. And so uh, we try to get him try and get both of those guys the ball. We try to distribute it. Um, to other guys as well. And uh, we have some exciting uh, up and comers that I think had, had great springs who are high effort guys who are, are really going to, uh, I think, take the next step this next season. Well, fortunately for you, you bring back four of your five starters on that offensive line. That includes center Johnny, Johnny Robinson, who has uh, started for you for four years. And, but there are so many young offensive lineman on the roster as well so it's it's one of those things and obviously you, you want to enjoy this this final season with with Robinson but so many young players there that have been getting time and will be with you for a while yeah we're really excited about that and um, we're we kind of pride ourselves in a player development program and so we we have uh, guys come in and and earn their keep and and you know prove that they're good teammates and that they're coachable and uh, and we we try to make opportunities um, for those guys. And so don't be surprised if we have a, a 10 offensive lineman personnel package this uh, this year, maybe on fourth down or something. We'll, we'll find a way to work them in. 
<laughs> that sounds like it should be fun to watch, no doubt. <laughs> we are previewing the 2022 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I encourage you, please like this video and, and subscribe to the channel. We are pushing toward 1,000 subscribers, and we're going to get there. Uh, we, our college football previews are presented this summer by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Uh, Coach, one of the things also, we'll stay with offense just a little bit longer because – you're going to have a lot more to do with that. Uh, Reggie Corbin, who's been the offensive coordinator for the last four seasons with the program, is moving on, and you're taking on that role, uh, taking over the offensive play calling this year. Yeah, it's uh, something we're, we're uh, we appreciate, Coach Corbin. You know, I, I, pl- I was teammates with Coach Corbin, and I uh, have nothing but uh, great things to to say about him. He's just uh, a great guy, and um, stepping into a play calling role as a head coach is. Um, uh, I, I've I've had the opportunity uh, in 2017 to do that for, for part of the season, and so I, I'm I'm excited about what we're doing offensively. And um, you know, Grady Cook is our old line coach, and he's really who the guy, for, you know, on our coaching staff who makes things tick from our from our offensive standpoint. And so uh, you know, any anything that we're doing, um, he's he's got a heavy role in it, and so I'm excited to see. Excited to see the progress of the offense and uh, the direction we're headed, and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to the fall. Well, we just mentioned a lot of players that you're going to have to work with, so it sounds like you know, you're know you going to have the pieces in place as you head into the fall of 2022. I, we, we need to talk about defense, at least for a moment, and for years you've been talking about Lane Napier, and rightfully so because he's just been a force on defense. Had his third season, a five with the program. Of course, you throw the COVID year in there third season in which he had three digits in the tackles column. I mean, it, it was just fantastic. Led the, the NAI in solo tackles last season as well. So I know that he's moving on. Gives you one more opportunity to talk about him, but tell us a little bit about what we'll see on the defense. Yeah, so we have, uh, you know, Lane had 400 tackles um, in his career by the end of his fourth year, which was a GPAC record, you know, and so uh, everything that he tagged, uh, however many hundreds of tackles he had last year, uh, <laughs> he, that was just icing on the cake. You know, he, he, he had broken quite a few records by the time his four years were up. And then that fifth year was really just bonus. So uh, tough player, tough as nails um, played through so many uh, things that other guys would have sat out through. And so just really admire his toughness and that edge that he brought. And just, it was really a violent tackler and it was, he was fun to coach and, and fun to have on the team. Um, and, and now that he's done, you know, we have guys who are, are going to step up and, and fill that role and um, really excited about our linebackers and the development that they've had over the spring and over the off season. We have a great great group of hardworking leaders in that in that uh, room and uh, we fully expect uh, there not to be any drop off on that linebacker core at all coach let's talk about the spring one more time here really quickly signing day in early February is always a it's a it's a time for excitement and and a time to look and see you know what what the future for the program can be and, and it looked like you had a fantastic signing day I want to read something from uh, Jake Nabel who is the sports information director there at Concordia does a fantastic job And what he said about uh, signing for this season, overall, Deverco and his staff enjoyed many significant in-state recruiting victories while placing an emphasis on student athletes who fit the culture of Christian character and work ethic in regard to strength and conditioning. Talk about that line because that is a fantastic line and and a summation of of not only, I think, the signing day, but, but your program overall. Yeah, and Jake does do phenomenal work, and we really appreciate all the time that he puts into covering our athletic department. And um, I, I believe uh, that you, in order to have a good football program, you have to win locally. And I think uh, we have the talent in the state of Nebraska and within a three and a half, four hour radius of our campus um, to to win a lot of games. And so we have really deep connections in in states like Texas, where we have a huge alumni base. And um, and in Kansas and even in the Lutheran high schools across the country, uh, St. Louis area and and Colorado, like there are just a ton, ton of relationships that we've developed over over decades, you know, and uh, and and so it's fun to reach out to those people and, um, you know, have referrals. And and I think it's it's a really uh, we lean on our. Uh, on the brotherhood of this football program and the guys who have gone through here. And, and it's not even just the football program. The university as a whole, um, it does a really good job of uh, 
you know, sending sending kids back here. If people leave here, they go out and they they meet other people, and then they they brag us up and and send kids on visits. And you know, we're just trying to steward this blessing um, well, and uh, we feel like we're doing everything we can. We're certainly trying really hard, and I think that's <laughs> after battle. So uh, really, really uh, excited about the future here, and just excited to be a part of it. Well, Coach, the, the season's going to get underway here pretty quickly. I realize it's June right now, but uh, it's going to come quickly and, and camp, and, and then that schedule gets underway. An interesting opening to your schedule, different this year. You don't have your first home game till week three, and that includes a bye weekend there, too. You open on the road at Doan on September 3rd. That is a Saturday, folks, for uh, all you who are Bulldogs fans. On the road at Doan, bye week in week two, and then finally back at home, uh, for week three as you host Hastings. Talk about the opening to your schedule this year. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can open with some in-state rivals, I think that's kind of fun, adds a little bit of a spark. Um, it, our guys don't need motivation to play anybody on our schedule, uh, any extra motivation. It's it's just fun to um, fun to have those, those close games and um, those, those fan bases are, you know, Crete is 30 miles from here. And, uh, <laughs> And so there's a lot of um, a lot of familiarity with the rosters, and um, so we're we're excited to go play down there to to start the season, and then uh, excited to host Hastings for our, our home opener. And um, yeah, we're we're very 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 uh, very much ready to uh, kind of get the ball going. And um, the, the bye week early in the season will be interesting, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. It'll be it'll be good to uh, kind of. Uh, have two weeks to prepare for uh, for both both opening both our away game and our home opener. So uh, we'll, we will uh, we'll report back next summer. I'll let you know how that goes. I, well, I hope to see you sometime in in season two and get a chance to to visit there as well. The Concordia Bulldogs seven and three last year, but they come into twenty twenty two on a six game winning streak. Momentum, a great spring, and it looks like things are on the right track in Seward. Coach Patrick. Daberko, thank you very much for taking time with us today as we are previewing the 2022 college football season. Our previews this summer presented by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. And success to you all and to the Bulldogs. Thank you, Joey. I really appreciate everything you do for small college athletics and appreciate the opportunity to talk today.